consumers do think everybody is the same. Like all agents are the same. It doesn't matter who you list with. They do think that we're a commodity that you can take, yeah. you know, Andy or Justin out of the picture, put uncle Jimmy in and you're getting the same thing. Can you extrapolate that a little bit? So I will tell you that you can only run on smoke and mirrors so long. If you really aren't selling houses for money, for more money than other people, if you're not actually negotiating better sale prices, if you're not actually getting buyers houses that they can't get on their own or for better prices than they could on their own or by going direct to listing agents, you will not be successful in this business, period, because you can't fake it for too long. On the flip side, though, when you actually do negotiate monster prices that those people can't get on their own, the sellers can't get on their own, nor can they get them from less experience. And I, whatever, I'm just going to say it, discount yeah. broke, you know, then you make a fortune because the world, like, like the law of attraction, like everybody comes to the people that make them, make them the most money, right? That that's just what happens in this business. So, um, you know, for all the agents out there, you need to know your numbers. You need to know your, not just list price to sale price ratio, because anybody can list low and, and sell for a big number. You need to know your average sale price to the average sale price of other agents. You need to know your failure rate, right? I know my failure rate is between 10 and 15% of all the listings I take, 10 to 15% of them don't sell. The average in the industry is 20, sometimes 25%, wow. right? And so you need to know that. And just through the law of numbers, law of averages, you'll become successful if your numbers are better than the averages. That's just how numbers work, right? You can't hide behind it. Um, I don't know if I answered the question, but. You, know, you definitely but did. Actually, it's my favorite thing about you. Um, you know, before I got to know you on the level that I know you now, again, I would just get so complicated with some of my analysis and more than anybody, you've done a better job of making me self-reflective of looking at the basics and being a black belt at those basics. And what you just said is very true. You know, what somebody listed a house for and sold it for means nothing. I recently had this conversation with a client of mine. There were three sales or two sales on their street and then his that is coming up. And he looked at the one and it was listed for, let's call it 1.2 million, sold for 1.205. And there was another one that sold for, listed for 1.4, sold for 1.275. You know, you would think, well, the one sold five grand over asking price, that's a better sale. Almost identical houses. And actually the one sold for $70,000 more, they priced ahead of the market, knowing that they'd have to negotiate down to that price. The other one priced low and ended up not getting multiple offers until like the very last second. So they only sold five grand above, but that 1.205 house should have sold for 1.250. Meanwhile, the other one sold almost identical to it for 1.275, right? So just interesting for you to extrapolate the numbers and what matters and the failure rate, super important. Um, I think that's one metric a lot of real estate agents don't look at. And then the other thing you noted is something I use very frequently where I'll pull up four sales in a catchment area if I am in competition and say, well, this is our average price per square foot. This is how much higher we sell than anything else had been sold in that area previously. Like that's not magic. There's a reason why they'd happen that way. So I think that's a great way of breaking it down. And, you yeah, know, let, let, me, let me just, I want to caution you on two things. Be very careful when you only focus on list price to sale price, whether they listed high, they got the better result. They listed low, they got the better result because you start to discount all the marketing, all the packaging that you do and all the negotiation that you do. Mm -hmm. it's only one small variable because the negotiation piece is the big piece. I can list a house for any price and I can get a great result because I'm a great negotiator. And what that means as a negotiation is very complex at its core, it has to be a win-win. But also there have to be really thought out strategies on how to get the end result that you want based on whatever price you go out at. So just because somebody prices it one way doesn't mean they know the strategy and negotiation to get the same result. And the other thing that you said is the square footage game. Um, you know, you have to like I work in a marketplace where the square footage game doesn't work very well because every house is a different size. And so, of course, smaller homes are going to sell for a higher dollar square, per square foot. And bigger homes are going to sell for a much lower dollar per square foot. And I lost a listing one time because this one guy was like, no, look at all of Andy's listings. You know, mine always sell for higher dollar per square foot. And I was, and I was, and I told that I, I mean, I, I tried to win, but I know he won because of that, but it's ridiculous because he's selling, you know, two and $3 million houses. I'm selling four and $5 million houses, right? My dollars are higher, right? So you gotta, you know, even I can lose on some of that stuff. So, you know, so you just. 
So to, you know, to jump back into that, the way, and again, I'd love your thoughts on this. That's one variable we look at, but we package a whole pile of them. Like we have three different pricing models that we use to establish consistency. We're looking for metrics that are consistent across, well, how did we price? Again, marketing is a big part of it. How many showings did we get? You know, how, what was the actual reach of what we did? And then the last piece, the negotiation strategy, right? Like, were we willing to draw a line and fight for every dollar for your property versus the agent that doesn't necessarily care? They don't care about their own commission, let alone your price. That just tells you it's the best offer you're going to get. On that last piece, on the negotiation piece, like from a negotiation strategy, what are some, again, very complex, but what would you boil it down to from a simple perspective if you were going to tell people what you think they're doing wrong when it comes to negotiation? That, that's a really good question. What do I think other people are doing wrong? I mean, the truth is they don't have the experience because I negotiate five or 10 of these a week. So I already know what everybody else is going to do before they know it. I know how agents and I know how their clients are going to react to a counteroffer when I write it. I know how they're going to react to, to what I say, um, even before they are going to react because they don't know what's about to happen to them. Right. And so it's just it's, it's an experience thing. Um, I think a lot of people operate from a place of fear and scarcity. Right. In general. And and, and they have to. Because if you're inexperienced, if you list a house for a million bucks and you get one all cash offer at a million five, really, you're going to tell your client to counter that when the client was happy at a million two, right? That's a damn scary proposition. And if you lose that deal, you really look bad. 